Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, it's time to load some 45 ACP on the RCBS Pro Checker 5. I'm going to pick up where I left off in the ultrasonic die cleaning video. We're going to assemble the dies, we're going to adjust them on the press, we're going to load some 45 ACP. Let's get rolling. This is a standard RCBS 3 die carbide set. Carbide because it has carbide sizing ring in the sizing die. We've got an expander die and we've got the seating die. So to start out, I'm going to insert the depriming stem into the sizing die. We're going to just work that all the way up so that we have a good bit of the decapping stem protruding from the mouth of the die here. We're going to take our lock nut and then hand tighten that. So when we get this in the press, I'm going to do a slight tighten with a wrench on this lock nut for the decapping stem. Proceeding on to the expander die, we're going to take this lock nut, work it up a little ways, and then get that set up so that we're kind of right in the middle. And then put the lock ring on this die as well. I like to put them up towards the top so that we can get it down snug or position where it needs to be and then uh, lower the lock ring and, and lock it into place. Okay, so for the seater, we've got two different seating plug options. If we're doing something like a, a flat nose bullet or a hollow point, we can use this uh, plug with the flat recessed portion here. Uh, if we're going to do round nose like I'm going to be doing in this video, uh, we can use the concave seating plug. So we're going to Put the lock nut on this guy. Pretty quick to change these out. We're gonna put the seating stem into the die and I'm gonna wait to back that down much more because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the die height and then I'm going to lower this down onto a completed cartridge of known cartridge overall length so that we can set that up efficiently and easily. So that's our pre-assembly on the dies. Now let's put them in the press. All right, in this press, we've got station number one, located right here, two, three, four, five. So what I'm gonna do is raise the shell plate to the top of the stroke. I'm gonna screw in this sizing depriming die until I make contact with the shell plate, right there, okay? Now, because I'm on a progressive press and I've got some flex in the subplate, the plate below the shell plate, I can go in an additional quarter turn. This will help to establish uh, a consistent uh, bottoming out of the shell plate against the die. Now, if we were working with a single stage press, I would probably just barely have it kiss the, the shell holder because if you have too much clamping force with a carbide ring sizing die like this one, you can actually break the carbide ring. So another quarter turn, use the shell plate to, to lock down the, the die there, and then we can use our RCBS uh, wrench to just give that a little bit of a snug. That's it for the seating die. Next, we're gonna adjust the expander. So I'm gonna take a 45 ACP case, and I'm gonna put that in station number two here. I'm gonna take my expander die, Raise the shell plate, and I'm gonna bottom that out into the case mouth. Now I'm gonna turn this until I get a good bit of resistance. Okay, now I'm gonna go about a half turn more and check to see what kind of expansion we've got on there. And I can see here that I don't really have any expansion yet. So I'm gonna go an additional half turn, pre-lock that down, and repeat, I think I felt something there. Okay, now it appears that I've got a just barely visible case mouth belling. Now, since I'm using jacketed bullets, that's gonna be perfect. And just like before, I'm gonna lock down the lock ring. And now it's time to adjust the seating die. This is gonna be in station number four. So what we're gonna do is take a completed cartridge of correct overall cartridge length, and I'm going to raise the ram to the top of the stroke. 
Now, in this video, I'm gonna use a separate Lee factory crimp die, so I don't want any crimp in this stage. So what I'm gonna do is get this uh, seating die adjusted so that it barely touches and then back off just a little bit. This is gonna ensure that we don't have any crimp. We're gonna have to apply uh, more downward force to, to get a, uh, a taper crimp in this particular stage. Now we could, if we wanted to use just this die set to do that. Now I'm gonna take the seating plug and I'm gonna make sure that the ram is in the, in the topmost uh, position there and I'm gonna bury it down. Now, uh, just a little bit of tightening force here and what we're gonna do is when we get the first completed round out, we're gonna compare that uh, against our spec and if we need to, we're gonna lower it just a little bit more. All right, rounding out things in station number five is the Lee factory crimp die for 45 ACP. In this case, I'm gonna start the die. I'm gonna raise the ram to the top of the stroke with the completed cartridge in place. I'm actually gonna get this plug down a little ways so that it's kind of in the middle of its, uh, its range of motion. Okay, and I'm gonna turn that down snugly against the completed cartridge. Tighten the lock ring. Now, we're gonna lower the ram just a little bit and we're gonna go one complete turn down. That's for heavy crimp. Half turn down for light crimp. Now, let's make sure that we like the result here. Looks pretty good. It looks like uh, I could go down a little bit stronger if I needed to. Uh, but I know with this die adjusted properly, I'm not gonna have any problems with this cartridge chambering in a 45 ACP uh, rifle or pistol. That's it, the dies are now dialed in. We'll make fine tune adjustments. I'm gonna go with the wrench and tighten the lock rings here uh, as appropriate once we get things uh, solidified. So let's start to load some ammo. Okay, so I've loaded some Winchester large pistol primers. I've loaded some CFE pistol, that's Hodgdon's new general purpose uh, pistol powder that has the copper fouling eliminator built in. I've got my sheet here, which I always keep right next to the press. This has got my load specifics. Looks like in this case, I'm running 6.0 grains of CFE pistol, uh, 230 grain round nose bullets, spear TMJs. So this is gonna be a good versatile classic 45 ACP load. Uh, I've got the Winchester large pistol primers and we're loading to a cartridge overall length of 1.200 inches. Now, as always, make sure you cross-reference this data with manufacturers' published data, like going to Hodgton.com. Don't take my word for it. But it's always good to make sure uh, that you have that information handy so that when you go to box up your ammunition, you're gonna have it right there. Make sure that everything is labeled, everything's gotta be safe. So those are the components uh, that we're gonna be using. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, full progressive loading operation. All right, so I've run a few rounds through. I had to increase my seating depth uh, just a little bit to get right on my 1.200 mark, uh, but we're ready. I'm gonna take some non-lubricated brass here because we're, we're using a carbide ring sizer die. And we're gonna get things kicked up here. Now, when we get to station number four, we're gonna start inserting bullets. Insert a case, insert a bullet. Insert a case, insert a bullet. Gotta get the rhythm down. Case, bullet. Nice and smooth. I'm liking the way the press is running.
And when we're at the end of the loading cycle, we can run it down. We're gonna keep adding bullets while we've got something going on in station number four. And we're done. So as you saw in this video, it's very straightforward to set up the Pro Checker 5 for full progressive operation. We've got a lot more videos in the series, so please stay tuned. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. As always, the full story is available on UltimateReloader.com. Thanks, y'all.